three future shutdown media manipulations to watch out for. Yes, freeze! Brought to you by agorasnexus.com and redflagreality.com. Number three, reports of increased coronavirus cases due to testing. The number of people being tested for coronavirus is naturally going to increase as more people feel comfortable enough to come out of their homes and see a doctor. As this takes place, more tests will be performed and more people will test positive with antibodies. The media will try to report this testing as more cases to fearmonger when the reality is that most of these cases will have already elapsed or be mild to asymptomatic. When journalists try to manipulate with headlines about new cases, make sure to check how many of those are actually for past infection. Number two, country comparison reporting. Remember that as more populations go through their respective height of infection, the media will try to make comparatives to scare people around the world. They will claim that certain countries have a higher weekly average infection rate than others, hoping that people will miss that the other countries being compared are at their relative lows after already having hit their peaks. For example, a comparison of Sweden at peak to Italy at a low. In addition to this comparison scare tactic, mainstream media heads will compare completely different demographics, like they did in comparing the deaths in the US to the deaths in Italy. In that instance, journalists ignored the fact that Italy has a total land area of about 116,000 square miles, a GDP of 2 trillion, and a population of about 60 million. Whereas, the United States has a total land area of about 3.8 million square miles, a GDP of 20 trillion, and a population of about 330 million. So yeah, it's no surprise when the United States, a country with over five times the population of Italy and far more land and economic activity, ends up with more cases. Number one, reporting on spikes that are due to seasonal changes. As winter approaches, don't forget that changes in sunlight exposure leads to a change in viral transmission. When there's more cloud cover, the sun isn't beaming down as effectively to shorten the lifespan of viruses with UV rays. When there's colder weather, people tend to congregate closer together indoors, breathe in each other's air, and come into contact more often. This seasonal change will naturally lead to a new spike in cases, as is typical with other illnesses each year during flu season. Don't let this predictable event be used to scare you into thinking there is some special new wave to be afraid of. Rather, this is a normal progression and people should take precautions according to their individual risks and abilities. Sickness on the heels of colder weather should not be accepted as some special excuse to shut down the economy again. Thank you for watching and supporting my work. And a special thank you to all of my fiducers. Agoras Nexus, the Asian capitalist, Crawford K. McDonald of ECM Real Estate, and Zach Lakowski. Help me produce more quality content and receive special perks for your monthly support by joining my Patreon, Subscribestar, or Float pages. See you soon! Yes, freeze!